how Paul and Barnabas planted so many churches in ten parts. A brief introduction to the book of Acts, selected verses from chapters 12, 13, and 14 with Dr. Galen Curra. As we have been progressing through the book of Acts, we have come to part four, the apostles' witness to Gentiles, that is, to non-Jews. Here, too, we have encountered several summary statements on the progress of the gospel. The Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. In 6-7, so the word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly. And in 9.31, then the church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria grew in numbers, living in the fear of the Lord. And now, in chapter 12, the word of God continued to increase and spread. We will occasionally make reference to the Greek text, for which we have provided a wooden literal translation in green type, and then a fresh translation in black type. In 12, Part 1. Barnabas and Saul moved to a less reached city. In 1224 we read, Thus adherents to God's message were increasing in number by multiplying. That was the situation in Jerusalem and Judea. We have chosen to translate adherence by way of metonymy, that is, use of the name of one object or concept, the Word of God, for that of another to which it is related, namely, those who believe it God's message. The terms increasing and multiplying can be taken as a Greek hendiades, that is, two verbs used of a single action namely, increase by multiplying. To increase is a numerical measure. Multiply, however, refers more to reproduction than it does to mathematics. So we're talking about how a mother church can reproduce itself in many daughter churches and granddaughter churches. Part 2. Barnabas and Saul proved faithful workers. In 1225, we read, So Barnabas and Saul returned to Antioch, Syria, having accomplished their mission to Jerusalem, bringing along with them John Mark. In Acts 1130, we read that the church in Antioch had determined to send relief to the believers living in Judea. This they did, sending it to the elders by Barnabas and Saul. The term here for sending is that which is normally used in the New Testament for the sending out of apostles or missionaries. Bible translators have difficulty dealing with the term to Jerusalem because Saul and Barnabas were returning from Jerusalem, having already gone there. The question for translators is this. Does to Jerusalem go with returned or with mission? Some translators prefer to replace the preposition to with from. Our solution is to take the term with mission. Having accomplished their mission to Jerusalem, they returned to Antioch. From this point onwards, the book of Acts shifts attention away from Peter, from Jerusalem and from Judaism, to Paul, also called Saul, and his mission to Gentiles. Part 3. Barnabas and Saul learn to make disciples. Thus, in chapter 13, verse 1, we read, Now there were in the church at Antioch prophets, Barnabas, Simeon called Nigerian, 
and Lucius the Cyrenian, and teachers, Manaean, who was reared with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. All previous mentions of church in the book of Acts refer to the many house gatherings in Jerusalem, which were all Jewish. Now here in chapter 13, the author Luke refers to house gatherings found in the city of Antioch of Syria that included many Gentiles. There were prophets and teachers. Prophets are those who speak messages from the Holy Spirit. However, these messages do not become scripture. See the example in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Teachers are those who instruct disciples in obedience to Jesus' commandments. See Matthew chapter 28, 19, where Jesus commanded to go make disciples by teaching them to obey his commandments. However, this is the only verse in the book of Acts where the term teacher occurs in Greek. The phrase prophets and teachers in Greek are connected with two conjunctions, te, te, seen here in Greek as te and te. The effect is to divide the list of names into two groups. First group were prophets, the second group were the teachers. Five of them are named and were told from whence they came. Barnabas was a Jew from Judea. Simeon, a Gentile from Africa. Lucius, a Gentile from North Africa. Manaean, a Jew from Galilee. He had been a childhood companion of Herod Antipas, who governed Galilee between 4 BCE and 39 CE. Finally, there was Saul, a Jew from Tarsus. Part 4. Barnabas and Saul are appointed missionaries. In 13.2 we read, Well, whilst they were serving the Lord by fasting, the Holy Spirit said to them, Separate now Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. The term for serving here is normally reserved for religious work throughout the Greek Bible, First and New Testaments alike. They were doing so by fasting. This is an, an example of Greek haendes. To fast, of course, is to take no time for meals because you're devoted to ministry. Do so now. The Greek particle de, after a command, makes it urgent. Aphorisata de, release now. Part 5. The church releases Barnabas and Saul. In verse 3 we read, Then, having prayed with fasting, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. Fasting is to refrain from usual activities in order to focus on ministry, on prayer, or on hearing from the Lord. Part 6. They leave for a neglected field or place of ministry. Chapter 13, verse 4. So, after the Holy Spirit had sent them out, and they had come to Seleucia, Barnabas and Saul themselves sailed from thence to Cyprus. Two Greek particles found in this text, men and te, are often translated both and. Here we have men, and here is te. Hence our translation, after the Holy Spirit had sent them out, and they had come to Seleucia. The Holy Spirit sent them. That is, the church released them, the Holy Spirit lent them, and the missionaries themselves booked passage. Themselves is an emphatic Greek pronoun, hence our translation, Barnabas and Saul themselves. 
sailed from thence to Cyprus. Cyprus was the nearest reachable, non-contiguous land without going through Paul's home city of Tarsus. Here we have the city of Antioch, from whence they sailed down to Cyprus, landing at Salamis. Otherwise, they could have gone to Tarsus, which was Paul's hometown. Part 7. They start several simultaneous works. We read, The next day, Paul left with Barnabas for Derbe. Please read through chapters 13 and 14 and note the many cities in which they visited and started new churches. Here we have reference to Lystra and to Derbe. These were towns in the district of Laconia, in the Roman province of Galatia, in south-central Asia Minor, which were connected by a major trade route, being about a hundred kilometers or sixty miles apart, which could be easily and quickly traversed using public transport. Thus a standing and frequent mission stratagem is this. Whilst you start one church, start several others also. In that way, the new churches can encourage one another, and if any should fail, the others continue on. <clears throat> Part 8. They Communicate Christian Truth When they had both evangelized that city and made many disciples, Paul and Barnabas returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Pisidian Antioch, where they began strengthening the disciples' souls by urging them to remain faithful to Jesus, explaining that we must enter the kingdom of God by passing through many difficult experiences. To evangelize means to explain the good news about Jesus to willing hearers and then to baptize new believers. We have learned from Jesus that you make disciples by teaching them how to obey his commandments. So they teach seekers and believers how to obey Jesus' commandments straight away. How long does that take? Apparently, you can teach those commandments and help new believers to begin putting them into practice within a few days or weeks. They would then return to another town, dividing their time between different new churches. They would strengthen the souls. The term strengthen, used in the New Testament, normally refers to teaching biblical doctrines, including the present and future forms of the kingdom of God. Urging is to give counsel, applying acquired wisdom to practical steps to take. To do what? To remain faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is Lord, crucified, risen, interceding, and coming again. Disciples forsake all other gods, and they learned not to fear men, nor do they embrace other doctrines. Part 9. They appoint competent leaders. Verse 23. Thus, after they had appointed elders in every church, having prayed and fasted for them, they entrusted them to the Lord Jesus in whom they had come to believe. The term here for appoint is normally used in Greek of official designations. To do so, whilst working with new believers, recognize those of character, observe their gifts, that is, how they interact with others, test their obedience to the commandments of Jesus that you have taught them, and watch for fruit, who are bringing others to faith, who are making disciples who are raising up new leaders in turn. This requires no voting. In the late first century, perhaps only three or four decades after the book of Acts was written, a document called the Didache, which means teaching, has this instruction. Appoint for yourselves bishops or overseers and deacons who are worthy of the Lord, men who are meek, and not lovers of money, who are honest and proven, for they also perform the service of the prophets and teachers, a phrase doubtless lifted from 
the book of Acts. Elders are not necessarily aged, but rather socially respectable, usually adult married males. They are emotionally mature. They are spiritually ready for the task, even though young in the faith, and there was normally a plurality of elders within a city. Churches at this time in history were comprised of several, sometimes many, gatherings of disciples, each led by the elders, whilst obeying Jesus' commandments together. We translate here every church, even though the Greek is in the singular, it occurs with a Greek preposition kata, which, when used with a singular noun, has a distributive meaning, that is, a plural meaning. These the apostles entrusted to the Lord Jesus. This implies neither a long-term authority of apostles dictating to new churches, nor long-term dependence of those churches on provisions from the apostles. They had believed in the Lord Jesus. The Greek verb here is a pluperfect tense, which means that these were early believers who had believed and have remained faithful. And part 10, they report back to Antioch. Verse 27, Thus, arrived back, they gathered the church members and reported on the great things that God had done, saying, God opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. The Greek, having arrived and having gathered, we have chose to translate here in better English, arrived back, they gathered. How could they gather the members of the churches in Antioch? Well, Barnabas and Saul were still elders. We've translated here saying, because the sentence, God opened the door of faith to the Gentiles, is preceded in Greek by the word hoti, which often introduces direct discourse or direct quotations in Greek. Door of faith. How would you interpret this metaphor? If you are seriously training others to start new churches, then we have for you here an assignment. Whilst you have your workers together, form groups of two or three, one of whom takes notes. Then take about four minutes to do the following. First, read together Acts 14.20b through 23 with verse 27. Secondly, in each group, they will identify all the action steps that the apostles followed. Find the verbs. Thirdly, put these into some kind of order that makes sense to your group. Ask someone in each group to report back to everyone present the steps that you identified. And fifthly, each group will report on points that previous reports did not mention. Then all together, discuss ways in which you could follow the same steps to start churches cell groups, or home gatherings. And then pray and ask the Lord to make it happen.